In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Logic's very powerful MIDI effects on audio tracks. Now, typically, these MIDI effects only reside on software instrument tracks. So I have a modulator MIDI effect over here, and on this track, I have Alchemy running. Within Alchemy, I have Mod Wheel affecting the filter cutoff. So now if I play a chord, you can hear the result of that modulation. Now, wouldn't it be great to have this effect even on audio tracks? So for example, let me add in an audio track here. Let's say I have some audio material. I'll just use something from the Apple Loops browser. Just scroll through and pick something. All right, let's bring that in. I'm going to loop this. And let's add an audio effect in here. How about the new fat effects? Let's use a filter in here. So I want this filter cutoff to be affected by that MIDI modulator effect. All right, so we can set this up using Logic Pro's very powerful environment window. So let's open it up. I'll go into a window here and look for MIDI environment. So over here, we're kind of looking at what's happening behind the scenes in Logic. So we can see here, this is that software instrument track with Alchemy on it, and this is that audio track. I'm going to click on new here and add in a monitor. This can be very helpful to troubleshoot and figure out what exactly is happening. So I'm going to take the output out of the Alchemy track and plug it into the monitor. Now going back to the main tracks area in Logic, let's open up the modulator window. You can see the modulator is running, affecting the mod wheel. But unfortunately, in the environment, we don't see any activity on the monitor here. And that's because Logic does not transmit that MIDI data after the software instrument. It stops at the software instrument. So when we take the output of the track and monitor it, we don't see any activity. But there is a workaround. Instead of having Alchemy on this track, I'm going to swap it out with the external instrument plugin. We can choose either mono or stereo. So now we have this external instrument plugin, which needs a MIDI destination. You may see different options over here depending on what you have connected to your computer. But what we need to create is a virtual MIDI port. On every Mac operating system, there is an application called Audio MIDI Setup. I'm going to go ahead and open that. And over here, we can access something known as the IAC driver. Now, if you don't see this window, in the menu bar, you can click on Window and then click on MIDI Studio. All right, so within this MIDI Studio, you will see all the different devices that are connected to your computer or have been connected at one point or the other. If I just double click on IAC driver, I can now create this virtual MIDI port. I can change its name, but I'm going to leave it as IAC driver. And I'm going to check this option here, which says Device is Online. All right, so now this one virtual port has been set up. Let's quit out of this application. And back in Logic, in this external instrument MIDI destination option, when I click over here, I see the IAC driver bus one option. So I'll select that. And MIDI channel, doesn't matter which one we select. I'll just set it to one. All right, so let's close this out. And now immediately you're seeing activity on the monitor. So that mod wheel data is now finally being transmitted out of this channel strip and we can see the data. If I change from mod wheel to pitch bend, you'll see the data change. Switch it out to aftertouch, the data is changing. All right, let's leave it at mod wheel. So that's great. Now we need to figure out a way to convert this data into a different type of data that will eventually modulate the FATFX plugins filter parameter. All right, to do this, we need to figure out what exactly is the parameter that will affect this particular DAO. To figure that out, let's open another monitor. And let's connect the output of this audio track into that monitor. Now I'll open FATFX again here. And I'm just going to twiddle the cutoff DAO. And as I twiddle that, you can see the activity there on the monitor. So let's compare this data with this one over here. What we're seeing here is a standard MIDI CC message. So it's on channel one. Data byte one is one. 
and divided by 2 is all the different values from 0 to 127. Over here, we do not have a standard CC message, but we have something called feeder messages. It's on channel 2. Data byte 1 is number 28, and these are all the different values that represent the different position of that DAO. So again, looking at the DAO, as I twist this at the lowest value, it goes all the way down to 0. And on the highest, it should typically go up to 127, but I guess here it's just maxed out at 126. Okay, so we know that we need to convert these two numbers, 1 and 1 over here, to 2 and 28. To do this, we can click on New here and add in another device called the Transformer. Alright, so let's take the output out of this monitor and plug it into a Transformer here. So now the MIDI data is going to the monitor and then that output is going into the Transformer. And let's add one more monitor. New monitor. Add that right after the transformer. It looks exactly the same right now because we haven't transformed it yet. So let's double click the transformer and check out the settings over here. So the transformer device will help us to transform those CC messages into fader messages. So in this upper section over here, which is called conditions, we get to select what we want. So status, I'm going to set equal to control CC messages because that's what we want to select. The channel, as we can see over here, is 1. So I'll leave that as 1. Data byte 1 is also 1. So I'll set that equal to 1. And data byte 2, we want all of them. So I'll leave that at all. Next, in the bottom over here, this is where the operation happens. So the control data needs to be changed to, or fixed to, a fader data. Not fader MIDI, but just fader. All right, so you can see here now it says F. So it used to have this icon, which stands for control change, and now it's faded messages. But it's 1, 1. We want it to be 2, 28. So this number 1 needs to be changed to or fixed to 2. So I'll click here and set that to 2. And data byte 1 needs to be fixed at 28. All right, so now we have exactly what we want. F228 and all those different values. Let's take the output of this monitor and plug it into that audio track. Let's now close out of the environment. On the audio track, let's open up the fat effects. Now you're not seeing this dial move because the MIDI track needs to be armed for that MIDI to pass through. So I'm going to record enable the MIDI track. And now you can see the filter cutoff reacting to the modulation MIDI effect. Let's hear this. Cool. So now we have MIDI data from the MIDI effects on a software instrument track going into an audio track and affecting the audio effect parameter. Alright, I hope that was helpful. Stay tuned for more.